Hello there guys and welcome to today's class reader. Uh, we're going to be reading chapter 12, Syrah and the Sea. When we all got to school that first Monday of the second term, it turned out that nearly everyone had heard of Amit's story. It had spread over the holiday more quickly than the news of a new flavoured packet of crisps and just as quickly as he had become famous for being the boy that beat Brendan the bully, Amit became famous for being that refugee boy. I don't think anyone kept their promise to Miss Khan of not asking him any questions because everyone in the class tried to sneak in at least one whenever they talked to him. Even Josie and Michael and Tom couldn't help themselves and started to ask him things like, did you have cheese sandwiches in Syria? Or what was the weather like in Greece? Or did you ever eat snails or frogs when you were in France? I don't think Amit minded because we were, f we were his friends. If he understood the question, he would just answer yes or no. And if he didn't understand, he would just stare at us or shrug. But there were lots of people he didn't know asking him lots of questions too. Some of them asked so many questions in one go that even we couldn't understand what they were trying to say. And we could speak English. Some classes even began to send messengers to see if they could find out anything. Messengers are usually the smallest kids in the class and are paid in sweets or football stickers or extra lunch tokens to get information. Some of them are okay and leave you alone if you tell, you, if you tell them that you don't want to say anything. But the ones that work for the school bullies are especially annoying. It's not their fault really because they get beaten up if they go back with nothing new to tell. But sometimes they won't listen to you or even after you've already given them the answer. The most annoying messenger in the school is Victor. Victor's extra skinny, even though he eats chips every day and he has a gold earring in his ear. He works for two upper school bullies whose names I don't actually know, but who always hang around with the lower boys' toilets and shake anyone that goes in until everything falls out of their pockets. But he also works for a group of girls who always stand around the water fountain, so you never really know who he's messaging for. After everyone had found out Amit was a refugee, Victor followed us around for nearly a whole week. At break times, at lunch times and even at home times, he would suddenly appear and ask lots of questions that even I found a bit strange, like, Where did your shoes come from? Where did you get them from? Are you scared of fireworks? Can you make a tent from a t-shirt? And are you really nine or are you actually secretly older? He got so annoying that even the break duty teachers began to notice and told him to leave Amit alone, except Mr. Irons. He was the only teacher who didn't say anything. After he got told off by Mrs. Sanders and Miss Hemsey at one break, Victor stayed away, but his questions stayed with us. Sometimes words hang around longer than people, even when you don't want them to. And whenever I was on my own, or just with Tom and Josie and Michael, Victor's questions would pop into my head and make me wonder what they meant. The only thing that was even more annoying than the messengers was Brendan the bully. Because instead of being nice to Emmett after seeing his pictures and hearing his story, Brendan the bully became even more horrible. He seemed to have forgotten that Amit could turn into a lion and punch him hundreds of times because he began to whisper, Oi, smelly, smelly refugee bag, whenever he saw him. And in the class, he would throw spitballs whenever Mrs. Khan or Miss Hempsey weren't looking. When he told Amit to tell Mrs. Khan or Miss Sanders about it, he shook his head and said, I'm not scared. Lots of badder people in camps. My dad say I fight them, so I fight him. When Amit said this, I thought he was very brave, so on Halloween I brought in one of my favourite Tintin books for him to look at because in it, Tintin stays and fights lots of bad guys, even though the bad guys are bigger and there are lots of them. There are always lots of them. See, you, you're like this. See, I said, showing him the book. I was dressed as a vampire and Amit was dressed as a green monster, although Tom said it was the Hulk. We were sitting in the playground on our own because Tom and Josie and Michael were still eating their lunch and had been taking too long. Tintin, he cried out when he saw the cover. 
You know Tintin? I asked, surprised. I hadn't thought about it before, but I guess Tintin really is famous everywhere. Yeah, said Ahmed. I read all the time. My dad, he read them to me. I nodded, remembering the voices my dad used to make when he read comics to me too. After a while, I said, I have all of them. You can see them if you like. I keep this? Asked Ahmed. Oh, I said, I hadn't really meant to give him the book. I only wanted to show it to him. But I knew I could ask my mum to find me another old copy in the library and save it for me when it was about to be thrown away. So I shrugged and said, yeah, sure. Amit gave me a big smile and stared to, and started to flick through it. He stopped at a page and pointed at Cap Captain Haddock. My dad, he had this, he said, moving his finger so that it pointed to Captain Haddock's beard. You? I shook my head. No, my dad didn't have a beard, but also my dad. He's dead. Amet nodded sadly and looked down at the picture. I not know where is dad. Maybe he dead too. I looked over at Amet. He's not here in London? I asked. Amet shook his head. I come here. My dad, he behind. I frowned. Behind? Where? Amit shrugged and looked down at the comic book. Maybe he in France. Oh, I said, feeling sad for him. I'd hate it if I didn't know where my dad was, or if he was still alive. I wanted to ask the lady in, red, in the red scarf uh, who she was, and whether she could help him to find his dad. But where his mum and his sisters and his cats were also. Then Amit flicked to another page and held it up to me. He was pointing to a picture. In it, Tintin and Captain Haddock and Snowy and a man with an eye patch were all standing on a raft in the middle of the ocean and Captain Haddock was waving a flag that had been made out of his blue jumper. See, said Amit quietly. I nodded. I have sister, he said. She there now. You mean here? I asked, pointing to the raft. No, said Amit. Here, he pointed to the ocean. And then I understood. Oh, I said, I felt strange as if something had just hit me on the inside of my chest. It was the same feeling I had in the hospital when Mum and Uncle Lenny told me that Dad had died. You mean, your sister? Her name's Syra, said Amit. Syra, is she in the sea? Amit nodded and rubbed his eyes. Then she's not with your cat, I asked quietly. Amit shook his head. Cat dead, in mountains. And then, flicking to another page, he pointed to a tent and said, Mum's sick, last time I see her. Oh, I said, I wanted to cry, but Amit wasn't crying, so I didn't think I should either. Instead, I stared at the picture he was pointing at, to just as hard as I could, so that my, he didn't see my eyes. We didn't say, say anything else after that, because a few seconds later, Michael and Josie came out and pointed at us. Tom was still inside because he, because it was chocolate pudding day and he always tried to get an extra piece after everyone else had left. I waited to see if Amit would show them the pictures and tell them about Syrah and the sea and his mum too, but he didn't. And when he looked at me, he shook his head. I knew that he wanted me to keep this a secret. I nodded back and made a silent promise to Amit that I would never tell anyone. But I didn't know what I would be forced to break my promise the very next day. Because that was when I heard something. And it was a something so scary that it changed everything.